Hello everybody, Savat here, and I'm coming at you from the test server, Fulmination. In today's video, we're actually going to be taking a look at one of my soon-to-be favorite ships, the ship that I've been wanting to get into for so long, the Apocalypse. Now, before we get into any of the fits or anything like that, I do have to say a couple of things. This is the test server, and on this test server, everything that is showcased here is not indicative of what it will be when it goes live. So there could be balance changes, and basically everything is does not necessarily have a release date. So even though we know that the Tier 9 stuff is coming out in about roughly two months or so, we're still not 100% confident that all the ships will definitely be released on what day or what not. So, basically everything here is subject to change. Also, another disclaimer that I have to throw in here is all of my skills are maxed for this. <clears throat> So, it is going to be very, very, very much if you've put all of your skill points into one specific area and have specialized in that perfectly. No one is going to have all of these skills maxed whenever this does launch, so do not expect to see the same performance out of these ships, even if nothing is changed on launch day for these ships. All right. So another thing, since I am going to be on the test server for some time, if you please leave me a comment below about what ships you would like to see, different fits you would like to see for those ships as well, or different strategies and different things that you would like to see, let me know and I'll see if I can look into those and showcase them. I might not be able to get to everybody's, but I will try to go ahead and do some other things because I do have all of those skills. Now today, the first ship we're looking at is the Apocalypse, just like I said before. It is one of the ships that I've been wanting to get into for some time now. And let us have a look. All right. So the Apocalypse isn't a Mars ship. It is one of their battleships. It is a tier nine ship. If we jump in here, we can see that. The Apocalypse itself is going to get skills from large laser operation bonus and also battleship command bonus per level. The scan resolution on the battleships is actually a pretty big deal, allowing them to lock faster than other battleship counterparts that do not have the scan resolution. As far as the other thing for the laser large laser operation bonus, it's going to give 7.5% for large laser op op optimal range, I apologize, and 7.5% for large laser tracking speed. Now, this means that it is going to be able to track better than most, and it is going to have a longer range than most. These are still large weapons and that tracking speed, if you are going to be using the beams, still aren't going to be able to hit any type of smaller ship once it gets into orbit around you. So today we're actually going to look at a fit that I've used on my Oracle. And it is basically the optimal range fit. So this is going to be for extreme range fighting. Range is further than we can even orbit at. I'm using this because I do use a kiting fit in the Oracle currently to actually accomplish T10s, and I wanted to see how far out that these would be able to get with their optimal range. In doing so, I have equipped in the top slots, there are 8 of these, and they are Sintus C-type large beam lasers. Right now, as you can see, their optimal range is 113 km, with an accuracy falloff of 29.9. So you're looking at a total of 142, yeah, 142.9 until you hit that 50% damage without activating any of the actual tracking computers that are in here. I do have one Predator Stasis Webifier on here, and that's just in case things do go south. And that Predator Stasis Webifier is on there over a Target Painter, because normally this ship is going to be out of Target Painter range anyway. It's going to be running two large group armor repairers. And that is just to heal up any ancillary damage that it takes. My hood ornaments of choice in this ship are going to be Mark IX Ogres. They are there again. Maybe they might do something if something gets too close to us. But for the most part in all of these, I've never had anything really get there. In the bottom slots, we have an Eagle tracking computer, Meta Level 8. Times that by four. So we're rocking four of those bad boys. The reason why I chose four instead of putting another damage mod in there is, again, this is going to be trying to be the extreme range fit. So because it's trying to be the extreme range fit, the fourth one only actually adds about 2-3 km, 
which isn't very much. However, by having four of them on there, you can cycle them almost indefinitely. I said almost indefinitely, so you still do have a little bit of downtime on them, but that does give you a ton of uptime to keep basically at least one going at all times, which increases your range drastically. We also have a Symptom C-type heatsink. A guest C-type large micro warp drive. The micro warp drive is really just used in this build to set that distance and get to where you have to go as quickly as possible. For rigs in the bottom slots, I have three semiconductor memory cell threes. The ship does have a lot of power grid power, um, and that's going to give it a whole lot more. It does need to have a whole lot more, because especially running with a micro warp drive that's going to remove some of that power, it can have a lot of power issues. It does not get the 50% reduction that the other like ships like the Oracle and stuff get from the lasers. And so they are using their full draw on the ship. Over here we have a, a Laser Collision Accelerator 3. A Laser <laughs> Collision Accelerator 3, I apologize. We have two of those put in there. It doesn't get any damage bonus to the ship, so I opted to go for two of the damage bonus ones and one Laser Burst Aerator 3, which is going to give me activation time. All in all, it's going to hopefully make this ship do a stronger alpha hit. And I didn't want to have the two aerators in there because, again, it draws so much power when it fires these lasers. The lasers firing faster can actually cause more of a power draw issue. So I opted for that for that reason, the, the, mo the more damage instead of faster firing. If you do put the faster firing, I believe it will increase your DPS a little bit more. All right, so this ship without using the drones is at 1,009.68 DPS. And with the drones, it's at a total of 1,105.77. This optimal range of 113 is pretty ludicrous. So we're going to go ahead and just take this ship out. We're going to go and just do a regular mission. And just to see... Just to see what kind of damage this thing is putting out in this fit. Now, if you've noticed, I did use a lot of parts on here that seem, why not use, you know, more capital type stuff or anything like that. And the reason is, is I want to try to use stuff that I know is going to be available when the ship comes out. And by know it's going to be available, meaning it makes the most sense that it's going to be available. Um... So we're going to warp it at 100. And we should be able to pretty much just lay waste to everything. The battleship is very slow to warp, so if mistakes are made, you're probably not getting out. Hence the Weber. So this ship can have quite a few locks at one time. One of the things we want to look at here is see if anybody is actually going to be approaching us quickly. It doesn't look that way, we're just going to let them fire. Okay. So if I can show you from here, if I activate one of those, the range on this becomes 159km for optimal range, with 40 am accuracy fall off so we can go out to 199 before 50 percent damage next if we activate the damage why that's activated it's at 1274 dps As you can see, the ship is fairly slow, even with max skills, it's only moving at 178. Hence one of the reasons for that micro warp drive. So at this range, we're still within optimal range of everything. No reason not just to let it fire. But we do want to get farther out. Much farther out. Alright, so with max skills and this micro warp drive active, 
We are doing a pretty decent speed here. I want to see what it actually gets up to. I guess I could just go to the fitting. Navigation will be 1,100. So with max skills, it's 1,100. It does take it quite a while to get there, though. So it's not going to go from 0 to 1,100 within a couple of seconds. It's going to take a few activations. Alright, so we're at 130 now. That is about our 50% marker. So we're going to activate those. We'll turn this off. Okay. It's even very slow to stop. See, we still got a lot more speed. So we want to lock up the ships are coming closer to us. We'll activate our range, and we are going to just start blapping them. Okay. So as you can see here, the last one just fired. The first one is almost, almost done, not quite. But even at these ranges, we can still apply a little bit of damage. All right, and we can stop about here. So able to do 5,000 damage from, from this range is really safe. Now also notice the ship itself is so big whenever it does stop from all of the inertia, it does change its direction. So it is going to take it a moment to actually get back into alignment whenever you are trying to move. So if you do stop with this ship, just realize that is a thing. All right. One of the things I would like to see if we are going to have ships that have long ranges like this that are going to be able to reach over 100, having an orbit or an approach that are over 100 would also be very nice as well. So this ship will be able to basically reach out and touch anybody from very far away and do quite a bit of damage. Okay. Six thousand two hundred and eighty two at one hundred and forty three KM. Even without having those on, we're still able to hit and do damage out of these ranges. Damage is a lot lower, though. But as you can see, this ship is definitely not cap-friendly. This is with maximum skills, so... You can see that uh, the cap's going down a lot on this, so just imagine when you have lesser skills. Okay. So we can pretty much stop here. We are now at 170. We're still doing 6,000 damage. 4,000 now that we're into armor. Yeah, it's just taking everything out. So 
So at 170 km, we're definitely not doing any type of damage without having one of our tracking computers active. Now this is just a test with this ship. I want to take it against some of the T-10s and see how it performs. I'm pretty sure it's going to be able to do all the T-10s no problem whatsoever just by saying extremely far away. So we have this Corleum Talos over here. It has large weapons as well, but we should still be well outside of its range. For the NPCs anyway. Results may vary when you're fighting other people. One of the things I might actually end up doing with this ship is, again, I don't know where it's going to start stabilizing on its cap, so I have to play around with it a bit more to find that out. And the reason is, is as you can see, the cap is now sitting at 51%. If I'm chain activating these, is it going to be able to keep up? That part I'm not sure about. Okay. We're going to start approaching again and get even further away. Let's see who's going to rush us. That guy's rushing us. So is that guy and that guy. This guy's already at 140 away from us. He's moving quite fast. And now he's dead. Hmm, we almost one-shot him. Now, so we're way out there. I don't even think these guys have any chance of actually getting to us. Again though, better safe than sorry, which is why I brought the Predator Webifier. One of the things that I do believe is I don't think those large drones are going to be able to hit these fast frigates with their micro warp drives and whatnot if they're not webbed down. So even though we do have the drones there, I'm pretty sure you would need a webber. Also, another reason, like I said, is at these ranges, the target painter's not really going to do anything. So, I really don't know what I could put there. The only th other thing that I can imagine that would actually be somewhat useful is for something like Angels and Devils or whatnot, where you have ships that'll actually be able to hit you back. Those ships, in those cases, um, having the extra group armor wrapper to help heal up some of that might actually be very useful. As I know with the Oracle currently, I've sat out at some ranges, not this far, but I've sat out at some ranges where I'm still being able to get hit back. So coming out here to the extreme ranges, 150. And like I said, this thing can even go out to 200 if you need to. So if these ships started hitting you back at 200, you can be at 50%. But well, we're sitting here at basically 150, doing full damage. Seven thousand seven hundred, and again, that's keeping up uh, optimal range of one sixty, basically one hundred and fifty nine. So we can just chill out here and kill things to our heart's content, as long as we make sure that we do take out anything 
that is going to be rushing toward us, and we should have the distance that we can actually do that quite easily. The reload time on the large lasers is, or the activation time rather, is very quick comparatively. Cannons, for example, are going to have an extremely long refire rate. That's that. So I know this was just a very simple mission to showcase this on, but I didn't want to get into anything long with this ship just yet. I just kind of wanted to show off that it can sit out at some pretty extreme ranges and still be in optimal range and do full damage. It can make quite quick work of everything, and it's going to make doing storylines the way that I like to do storylines very simple, and I'm very excited to actually see this ship and be able to play around with it. So let me know what you guys think about the apocalypse down in the comments below, and again, let me know what you what you want to see next and how you would like me to go about that. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell if you want to be notified by any more releases that I release whenever I do. Also, please follow me on Twitter and join us on Discord. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time here from the test server, Fulmination and Eve Echoes. Thank you.